Lord said, I think thoughts of peace and not of affliction. You will call upon me and I will answer you and I will lead back your captives from every place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And be with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw a scroll in the right hand of the one who sat on the throne. It had writing on both sides and was sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a mighty angel who proclaimed in a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to examine it. I shed many tears because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to examine it. One of the elders said to me, Do not weep. The Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, has triumphed, enabling him to open the scroll with its seven seals. Then I saw standing in the midst of the throne and the four living creatures and the elders, a lamb that seemed to have been slain. He had seven horns and seven eyes. These are the seven spirits of God sent out into the whole world. He came and received the scroll from the right hand of the one who sat on the throne. When he took it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. Each of the elders held a harp and gold bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of the Holy Ones. They sang a new hymn, Worthy are you to receive the scroll and break open its seals, for you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God those from every tribe and tongue, people and nation. You made them a kingdom and priest for our God, and they will reign on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lamb has made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God. The Lamb has made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their Maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their King. The Lamb has made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God. Let them praise His name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to Him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves His people, and He adorns the lowly with victory. The Lamb has made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Alleluia. 
the Lamb has made us the kingdom of priests to serve our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. If today you hear his voice, pardon not your hearts. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus drew near Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If this day you only knew what makes for peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. For the days are coming upon you when your enemies will raise a palisade against you. They will encircle you and hem you in on all sides. They will smash you to the ground and your children within you, and they will not leave one stone upon another within you because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Good morning. Good morning. Jesus wept. He saw the city and wept over it. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears. Three times, sacred scripture tells us that Jesus shed tears. The first in John's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 35, at the death of his friend Lazarus. The second, in today's Gospel, Luke 19, 41, upon seeing the city of Jerusalem as he approached to engage in his passion. The third time is recorded by St. Paul in his letter to the Hebrews, chapter five, verse seven. This reference does not point to a specific time and place, but intimates that Jesus cried tears of sorrow at other times as he lifted up his prayers to the Father. So, Jesus wept. As I began to ponder this morning's gospel, three questions came to mind. Why do people cry? Is crying a sign of weakness, particularly in regards to Jesus? And what did Jesus' tears mean for us today? In my search for answers to the first question, I was fascinated at the total amount of research that has been done on the subject of crying and tears. I will not bore you with a lot of details regarding this. Suffice to say that crying is believed to be the greatest outlet of emotions, agony, surprise, sympathy, joy, grief, helplessness, and yes, stress. Research says that women are likely to cry five to seven times more than a man. And crying produces hormones that can relieve stress and tears and crying smooths the cornea of the eye, lubricating eye motion. But enough on that. The second question, is crying a sign of weakness? I'll get back to this question regarding Jesus shortly. But regardless of what we've been taught as men, the answer is a resounding no. As I said earlier, crying relieves stress, cleanses the eye, and embraces our emotions. More importantly, crying is the most basic sign of our humanity. The strength or weakness of any person, man or woman, is not dictated by the tears that are or are not shed. Strength is dictated by the ability to rise above your tears and continue with your day-to-day -day existence. Crying is not a sign that you are weak. Since birth, it's been a sign that you are alive. So are Jesus' tears a sign of weakness? Again, no. In today's gospel, Jesus is looking out over the city that he loves. He sees not only what it has become, but what is to happen to it in the not too distant future. He knows the course that has been charted. 
He is distraught over the failure of his people to accept what has been offered, what has been rejected, and the punishment to come. He knows in minute detail the history of this people. All of history has come down to this moment. In their obstinance, blindness, and disbelief, they have rejected the promised Messiah. In his humanity, these are tears of compassion, tears of sorrow, tears of love, not out of weakness. But one remains. What do Jesus' tears mean for us today? To answer this, do I really need to expound on our world today? Has our world, too, become totally blind to the truth, what is right and just? Can we not see the hatred, corruption, and darkness that encompasses our world? Does not Jesus continue to offer prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears for our world? Is it not incumbent on us to bear the light of Christ in this darkness, to actually be the light of Christ? Maybe to shed a few tears for our own time and place. Yes, I believe it is. May Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Coming together as one family in faith, let us offer to God our prayers and our needs. For all who have bowed themselves to God, that with his help they may faithfully keep to their resolve, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For peace among nations, that delivered from all turmoil, the peoples may serve God in freedom of heart, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For the elderly who suffer from isolation or sickness, that they may be strengthened by our love of them, as brothers and sisters, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For all of us gathered in this sacred place by faith and devotion and by love and reverence for God, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For ourselves gathered here and for those watching on video, that as God does not cease to sustain us with the things of this life, we may know how to use them in such a way that we may hold even now to the things that endure forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, joined through the intercession of St. Thomas the Apostle, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. And for our country, for whom this Mass is being offered today, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude with a prayer of praise and honor of the Blessed Trinity. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, for all without end. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. <coughs> Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Pray for the Lord, 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 the
Grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory is with one voice we acclaim. O holy, holy, holy Lord, for God our hosts, heaven and earth are fully glory. O Son of the Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, blessing down your spirit upon them, might the good God, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the child. So once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give me thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that for taking up the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, you may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, gracious, and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. To await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be chosen among you, but I want to show the word in my soul shall be Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Prayer to St. Michael. Holy Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us now. Be our protection against the wickedness of sinners of hell. May God rebuke him we humbly pray. And be you, O Prince of Heavenly Lords, by the divine power, for us in the hell, saved from all the unequal spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Divine praise and protection against storms, hurricanes, and other disasters. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, the God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus, the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Consoler. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and happy conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, the most chaste spouse. Blessed be God, the angels and the saints.